Hey guys. Hey, hello, thank you, Scott. Hello, Andy. Hi, Steve. Hello, Scott, and hello, everybody out there in attendee land. Attendee land. <laughs> Imagination land. Um, <laughs> I can't believe it's another week, but uh, it is. Just these webinars kind of mark the weeks as they tick off. Here we are, another Tuesday, and uh, we'll get started. Uh, as people straggle in, they know that we've got a few slides to get through. First, being the uh, the old disclaimer, just a reminder that we're uh, not registered investment advisors. We're not brokers. We're not allowed to manage money for a fee. Um, so, with that said. Nothing that we show, uh, anything you see or hear, should not be construed as um, you know financial advice for you. These are our opinions. Uh, we are a software as a subscription company, not an RIA group. All right. So again, we're 14 plus years in the making. Many versions uh, brought us to where we are today. Andy and I have been using the product since pretty much day one. And we've seen a lot of things change over those uh, years. And we recognize for new users, it's uh, it's not always something that can be grasped in just a few days or even five days on some of our trials, our test drives as we call them. So we do our best week after week to try and make uh, available during the market hours and after like right now, um, the people here to help people with their learning curve of the product because it's a very in-depth product. And some of the ways we do that is certainly Barry's live room every day from bell to bell he's in there and it's a free room so all you have to do is go to our website and click in on the upper menu into the live trading room which is free um, I, we think the content that's going on in there is you know, rivals other rooms out there that people are paying money for so Barry does a great job sharing his desktop and his time with people uh, and also helping people if they have questions that's the point if you have a question don't feel bad about asking Barry will demonstrate it for you we have the afternoon webinars, such as the one today. Um, we have the uh, Friday support session in lieu of afternoon webinars. Most people are heading out on Friday, so between 11 and 2 Eastern, the four of us, Sean, Andy, David, <laughs> Sean, Andy, um, Jamie, and myself, uh, we all pull up a chair and um, do a live support session for three hours if needed. Two hours usually is the average time it takes people to get their questions through. So another great place, another opportunity to show up and get real-time uh, live demonstration. Same format as we're using right now in the GoToWebinar. And then the TA University uh, just did the 201 class this morning. It's still live. Um, we have a recorded version as well, but the live uh, classes, they start every Monday and they start over every Monday, Monday through Thursday. So by the time you get to Jamie's stuff in the Thursday edition, you're at the pretty advanced level and you're doing back testing and, and things like that. So that's also free. It's available for anybody, of course. You don't have to be a subscriber to show up to this. So all those things, I think, really help uh, people try to get the most out of our product as soon, as quickly as possible, shorten that timeline. Which brings us to the theme of my week is uh, man and machine. Just a reminder that uh, as we go forward, you know, technology, machines, AI, what have you. It's there to help us, but it's not there to take over for us. It's there to give us curated ideas and allow us to take those curated data points and make the best decisions possible, whether we're using ways driving in our car or whether we're using trade ideas, uh, AI, or using the customized um, strategies that uh, you program yourself. Either way, Technology is here to stay, and it's not a substitute to turn our back on, but it's here to help and serve us and make our lives a lot easier. Um, down the road, I think the traditional job for an average college graduate might be monitoring some sort of data set in real time because somebody's going to have to do that, which frees up uh, people to do other things as the AI does the hard number crunching for us. So today, October 8th, uh, we'll do a typical market recap. Certainly a lot to talk about. Um, not a lot to talk about with the Holly recap, but Andy might find a couple things um, to comment on. Trade of the week did uh, trigger, and Roku is a fighter. We've got a lot to say about that, and we're kind of happy the way it's holding up. Uh, and then, you know, back about last Friday, I started thinking about the 
paper trading that's coming out and it's a really big deal especially for newer traders that don't really have a lot of mileage behind them and I want to try and go through what I think was really important I started doing this last Friday through the weekend started writing down some rules and I came up with nine I actually had ten but one of them was for day trading so I kicked that one we got nine I wanted to focus on the swing trading time frame and some of the rules that uh, both Andy and myself because we've been kind of trading side by side for a long time now, 20 years, 21 years. Um, so we've got some rules and I think some of those rules will be uh, absorbed and, uh, and, and taken well and some maybe you've heard of, some you haven't, but it's gonna be a good exercise because we're gonna really focus on the trading side of things today, especially in the swing trading time frame. And then to wrap it all up, um, knowing that I was gonna do this, um, I kind of turned the uh, brokerage plus um, into kind of a mirror of some of the swing trades I'm doing in another account. And we'll apply some of the rules that we go over first. We'll finish up with that. And then if there's any questions, you know, we'll, we'll go from there. So let me hit escape on that and let me zoom out into uh, the first slide. Now, some of you know, you know, Wally, David, and Fran, you guys were with us yesterday in Jamie's webinar as I did the market recap, and you probably recall I had a real hard time finding any good case for the bulls when we saw this candle right here, um, bouncing two and a half, three days into the pocket, as we call it, the pocket being this jumbled mess of downward sloping and crossing over moving averages. This is the sweet spot if you're waiting for your pitch as a short seller. Uh, this is also a um, spot to take profits. If you were a bounce buyer down here, if you're one of the lucky ones that uh, actually got some great prices. And uh, I said yesterday that um, I didn't see much of a case to uh, take that closing candle, which gave us a big rejection wick. And this is textbook. You know, Andy's seen this a million times too. When we bounce up into the pocket, if we close on highs like that green candle, it's, it doesn't really have as much weighting to me, but boy, when we push through it and then reject it and get closed below it and we have the obvious daily candle giving us that rejection middle finger there, that's really hard to recover from uh, if you're a bull and, and hope for that kind of action to uh, grind and then move higher uh, out of those levels. Well, excuse the Jets. <laughs> They'll be out of here in a second. Oh, there is his buddy. Okay, hold on a second. We don't hear him uh, that loud in our loud as I do? Yeah, no, no, no not right. at all. Not Lone Moore, man. It's uh, Tom Cruise and uh, what, are the, what are those two names? Iceman and Goose, whatever. Goose, yeah. <laughs> it's a great movie when you're a 15 year old boy, but um, <laughs> <laughs> as a grown man, I don't know. The. Um, so yes, as Waleed and David are confirming, uh, yesterday I was extremely nervous about being on the long side. So I was saying, take your profits if you hadn't. Uh, if you wanted to get short, that might've been a great opportunity. I said more than likely we were gonna see some, some selling and maybe even a gap. And we got kind of what I've seen over the 25, 30,000 hours that Andy and I have been pouring over daily charts. Uh, it happened, so um, here we are. Uh, not a good looking, chart at all in the S&P. That was in fact the backstop. That was in fact uh, the moment um, to take profits on the dead cat bounce and maybe load up on some more shorts. Uh, let's take a look at the NASDAQ. Same kind of thing yesterday. There was our big wick, um, you know, big red candle closing at near lows. We can look at the intraday chart here. We tried, you know, I'll put the S&P back up first. We tried to hang in there and, um, and, uh, and bounce midday. But we don't really pay attention in swing trading until the end of the day. We don't make our decisions on midday candles unless we're at a level that's close to our swing stop. But we'll, we'll get into some of that later. So um, gap down, peaked our head above. Here's what Fed Powell tried to uh, do what is not his job. It's not his mandate to job on the market and talk it higher. But it seems like the last three federal chairmen um, decided they'd like to do that. And it didn't really work today. A little bit of a push there, and then the market kind of said, you know, I'm not really into QE4. Uh, I'm gonna go with what the tea leaves are saying here, and it's not looking that good. 
I'll just cut to the chase. I really feel like we got a date coming in here with the 200 day moving average. You know, as we draw tomorrow's um, 200 day moving average, it's probably going to come right up in here where the low of this candle was four days ago. I really feel like this is an easy downward target. Um, and we've got a lot of momentum uh, certainly going uh, towards it right there. I had an analogy earlier, but I think it, it escaped me. So back to the NASDAQ. Um, I think we also have a date here with these uh, these lows. Let's um, draw those in there. I feel like the momentum is there. We talked about last week the candle of moving day. I don't really think today was moving day. I think it was the beginning of uh, some 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 real good action that just has a date with these orange lines that I'm drawing in here. So um, Nasdaq, I think we're going to have a date with that line. Uh, the Dow, I think we're definitely going to have a date with certainly the 200 day moving average first, but um, we'll just go ahead and call it that moving average and not try and get too greedy there. And then let's see how that IWM looks. It just uh, doesn't look good at all. And it's very close to a lot of uh, a lot of prior support, which could become um, some future areas of the hammer banging on the crack, or banging on the ice, looking for the crack in the ice there. I don't know. We have much more selling in this market. How much longer this range is going to be able to hold there in the IWM? But um, there's just not a lot uh, to say that's uh, good for the bulls. Again, we talked last week. Was this going to be the biggest double top, or was this, as we talked last week, going to turn into a cup and handle? It looks like we're losing that cup and handle option. Well, that's done. Based, yeah. Yeah, based on those horrible, um, well. They're sweet if you're a short seller, but if you're um, looking for higher prices and you didn't get out yesterday when you had the opportunity, uh, that was uh, that was the call. And um, kind of glad it uh, it worked out the way I thought it would because I really couldn't find any reason yesterday to get excited about uh, that dead cat bounce right up into the pocket for for many reasons. It may be it may be setting up that puking camel uh, pattern. The puking camel pattern. <laughs> It'll develop. It's it's not there yet, but you can see the two humps. Yeah. <laughs> There's the puking camel pattern. <laughs> That's more of a more of a uh, more of a uh, dinosaur. Um, yeah, we're running out of steam up here. You know, every time Andy talked a lot about it, man, there is just no re no way anything wanted to follow through back here uh, at these levels at the at the, the what's starting to look like maybe a short-term double top there. Yep. Um, you know, Grand, Grand Tetons there, man. Yeah. My dad called me and said, well, why is the market selling off? Is it China? Is it this? Is it that? And I said, no, dad, it's, it's technically, it's running out of steam. And when we start to get these ugly days, everybody turns and runs around and tries to figure out what's the market selling off on. And it's really, in my opinion, it's just selling off on the news du jour. But the real reason is that it's technically it's tired. Mm -hmm. I mean, we went, we went go back higher, a long yeah. time. We went back a long time, a couple of weeks ago. I mean, look at this thing since 2010. Mm -hmm. This is almost 10 years here. This is very unusual. And mm -hmm. if you want our opinion of it, this is not really a, you know, a market. It, it's, it's a happy QE driven market by the Fed. That's where we are now. And the longer we keep doing this, the more we're going to have to probably pay the piper at some point. I mean, I'm all for paying the piper. Let's get it out of the way a little bit, and then um, let, you know, we're due for a correction is what I'm trying to say. We can focus all we want on why the market's doing what it is. I just think it's running out of steam here in the last couple mm -hmm. months, basically proved that. Um, I think we're going to have a lot of momentum going through tomorrow. So I'm going to talk more about this as it relates to some of the swing trades we have on, but we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. Uh, today's chart, says Marguerite, today's chart seemed to mirror the confused international situation. Well, yeah, I think, again, it's just where we find ourselves in the, uh, the news cycle. The market is running out of steam for whatever reason, and the smart money managers are seeing it. And whatever news we open with tomorrow will be the news that people probably try to blame some more selling off if we get selling. But I kind of feel like we have a date with this orange line sooner than later coming up here. Um, almost like a, that's what it was. It was almost, that was my analogy. It was like a body slam. It was like a wrestler. Yesterday, this was the wrestler picking up his adversary yesterday, holding him above his shoulder, and <laughs> overnight slamming him right on the open. And there's going to be some follow through into tomorrow. I really feel like so. Um, that's my take, and I'm sticking to it. Unless you want to add anything, Andy. That no, no, I, I agree with you. I, 
I agree with you, Steve. I, I think, you know, to, to call, you know, we're heading into a bear market or, or how long this will continue, who knows? I mean, we got to get to that 200 day moving average. We defended it now for, yeah. uh, you know, you can see it right there. Uh, we've gone mm -hmm. below it a couple of times. So once again, it's one of those kind of things. If you're bearish, you would like to see it trade below that 200 for several days. And then, boy, we could really see, yeah, we could really Andy see. Andy brings up a good point. We've traded below it, but we need a few days to lock in that data. And we only got two days each time. Two days below and whoop, right back up above. The buyers mm -hmm. didn't like that. So if we get back below here towards the end of the week and we start to bleed below the 200, it could be on. Mm -hmm. It could be on in sure terms could. of the, cor the correction that could come. So not feeling any bullish love at the moment at all. Yep. Um, Apple, interestingly enough, closed, started to close really weak today. I was noticing the market was accelerating in the final hours there a little bit. Not too bad. I guess it was worse than I thought. But um, keep an eye on Apple. Apple's really been a proxy for this market. It's got a lot of waiting in it. Mm -hmm. uh, kind of in no man's land there for the moment. But anyway, so that's it for the market recap. Um, we got a lot more to talk about uh, when Andy finishes, whatever he wants to talk about in terms of Holly, and then we'll get back to some more swing trading axioms and rules. Yeah, there, there's gonna, not going to be a whole lot to talk about, uh, but I feel like we could uh, garner a lot from her today because look at the trade count. I can't remember the last time we were in single digits in, in total trade counts. Uh, and you may ask, why is that so? Look at all the strategies that came to play today. In other words, they made the cut by having a certain winning percentage and a certain profit factor. Well, let's look at what we had today. Here's the spies. Okay, we had a pretty decent gap down in the, in the spiders right there. The overall averages had a, you can see the gap there on the daily. Uh, I drew a line at the open just to kind of show you what uh, she had to work with, you know, in the first, uh, well, gosh, all the way basically to the close. I mean, really, you take out the last 30 minutes, uh, it was almost a doji. So you had, you know, a down move uh, followed by an up move, actually went to highs, and uh, you can see the, the damage done in the last, uh, you know, hour there, especially the last uh, 30 minutes. But uh, uh, nonetheless, there were a few trades uh, that fired. Overall, you can see here uh, in the uh, channel bar, uh, this is uh, a P&L if you were to take 100 shares of every alert that Holly uh, fired. Uh, okay, you can see there uh, basically a flat down, a flat day, down two bucks. Uh, so there's really not much to talk about. I mean, I, you know, I could point out a winner, uh, and I will, and then I'll point out a loser because for every winner, you basically had a loser today uh, and risk off. Holly Grill only fired one trade today, and it looks like uh, risk on probably held, and it looks like it's probably, uh, I'm not trying to try to guess which one it was. I can't see the, strat I can't see the uh, segment on this one, but nonetheless, I thought this one was a pretty good one given uh, the, the backdrop of the market, uh, this AVNS, okay, you can see what happened here. Holly, uh, it came up here and petered out, and had a lot of, uh, just say resistance right here. Oh, what happened there? Didn't want to hold. Yeah, a lot of resistance right here, could not get through. Holly saw this and it triggered on a downward dog strategy and that would have been a nice one and you could have actually held that, you know, all the way to the close. She got out for a small loser on a, I'm sorry, small winner on a timed exit, but it's one where you could have, you know, it stayed below. There you go. That Look at that uh, uh, 10 period moving average. You mm -hmm. didn't have a candle to close above it. And so this is one that you could have held on and had some nice little gains there in A, B, and S. Uh, looking at this one, this one fired off, what, about an hour and a half into the day. And if, you, if, if it's me, uh, it's a strategy that obviously had, you know, the, the right winning percentage and profit factor. But once again, given the backdrop of the market, guys, this is where I think you have the advantage over Holly. Okay, this, uh, you know, look at this. I mean, it barely got positive on the day. If it's a hammer, I'm gonna want to. I'm gonna want to see it trade above yesterday's uh, close. I mean, high, especially in a market like this. And that was just kind of a tippy top buy there, and got out on a stop hit pretty pretty quickly on that one. You could see that really quick drop. But once again, uh, 
if I'm once again looking at the backdrop of the market, I can give several reasons why I would have may have taken this short, and I can give a lot of reasons probably why I would not take this YUMC. Uh, it's just not not a whole lot of strength in the market. You know, we were down all day. Uh, did go to highs, but that didn't last long. But anyway, in between that, it's just a lot of uh, uh, small losers. Uh, not, not like I said, just nothing to write home about. But overall, hey guys, big gap down, sloppy market as far as the intraday action goes, and until the final close there. Uh, so, you know, what could this tell you, man? Maybe tell you if you're, if you're not really good at short selling and not knowing where to enter the, you know, the, the prices, <coughs> hey, sit on your hands. Holly had a lot of strategies to come to play. You can see not a lot of action today, only nine trades. Uh, and she typically does about 20. So, um, I said, I call them trades. I should say alerts. So Steve, that's about it. Not a whole lot to talk about today. I'm gonna to pass it back to you right. and uh, unless you have something you wanna to add to Holly. No, just there wasn't a lot of directional bias. There wasn't a lot of trade no. count bias. There wasn't a whole lot really to go with today there. Uh, gap uh -huh. downs and gap, big gap downs and big gap ups are They can be tough the, for any strategies. Mm -hmm. Kind of the case. Here's my screen. I'm not very good at drawing the, the puking camel, but when we have Jeff Mackey show up at our uh, <laughs> at our summit and he's the master of drawing and putting charts <laughs> together with animations. So I'm not even gonna attempt That wasn't to, bad. That's not bad though. <laughs> I'm not even gonna attempt to do what Jeff Mackey can do. I think he, I think he's stirring up. I think he's got some good content. He's oh I'm sure he does. Us. All right. So this is the point in the webinar where we will talk about um trade of the week. Now trade of the week, a couple things. Let's go back to where we were. Um let me do this. I'm going to go one. Let's try this again. One, two. Okay, so this is essentially yeah. what Andy and I and everybody looking at the trade of the week had to work with going into the weekend. And like I said, all I saw was the giant wrestler uh, holding his adversary above his head, getting ready to body slam him. And the mandate of our trade of the week is to try and pick things to go long. And you know, could have picked something like SDSs, but we've done that a lot of times. We could have just said we don't like anything. We want to pick cash and because there's nothing out there. That would have been the easy way out. But, you know, Andy reminded me that, you know, sometimes in these situations, some of the best places to look are things that have already been beaten up really badly. And as we move forward in the SPY, now we can go back and look at Roku. Yeah, Roku had itself let's see 175 lost 70 man I had about 60 percent haircut maybe yep. maybe maybe more yeah. and of course we talk look left all the time when we look left and the price definitely hit that level well I also mentioned in the uh, in, in the email Monday morning a couple things one in a market situation like we just looked at going into the weekend what did we have to work with well I mentioned we don't want to go for the A table because stuff that might be on the A table has been you know, rather high flying lately. Uh, I'm not looking for an example. I'm just clicking through there. But if something on there, that A table didn't work and the market did collapse, you know, those things can come down pretty hard. Whereas something that already had its nasty haircut. And I might add also, you know, after a big fall like this, th this is not a pullback. Th this is a correction. And corrections do not turn on a dime. Corrections do not turn on a, an event, a daily candle, a single wick. Events, uh, what I mean to say is um, corrections, they base in a process. Process is different than an event. Event would be you know, a one day boom, spike down, good coast is clear is up. No, we can see it, try to do that a few times. And then it went down and test it again and test it again. So it feels like the event, excuse me, it feels like the process of bottoming has somewhat occurred in Roku as we went into this weekend. Well, lo and behold, that type of a focus, I think really helped us uh, in this particular week because we did get the big market sell off that we feared and Roku absorbed it like a champ. Matter of fact, it absorbed it better than a champ. It's starting to actually look like if this market bounces in the next couple of days, this thing is doing what I call the bird in the hand. It's bouncing up off of its process low and it's moving sideways, grinding sideways as that 
10 period moving average curls turns and start to support it like a bird in the palm of his hand and sometimes if the scenario is right and the backdrop is right that bird can take flight out of this type of a setup so uh, it triggered for us on yesterday right on the open and i was not really happy about that <laughs> um another thing we said uh, also andy didn't we say do not uh, you know try and go for this particular entry in the first 15 minutes of the market I have to go back and look and I'm see. Not sure if, I'm not sure if you put that in the verbiage, right, but uh, I'm going to go back and look right now just to make sure. There's Roku. Let's just see. Yeah, I think it was if, if market was up, we would. You know do what? It. It's but you know what? I'm glad you bring it up, Steve, because it's a good rule. It really is. You know, it, you always got to watch those early. Uh, and I say this with my uh, a lot of my alerts. You know, the the pullback alerts above the 50. I always tell people be careful. Yeah, in this first 15 minutes, I, I will never take a trade. Uh, you know, in the first 15 minutes, a lot of times you can wait for a pullback and get a better trade. Yep, there you go. <laughs> yep. So we'll get there in a second. Um, don't particularly like the first 15 minutes and this one triggered in the first 15 minutes. So both Andy and I winced when that happened. We knew what the market mm -hmm. was poised to do triggering in the first 15 minutes. So kind of keep that in the back of your mind. And, you know, that's a great trans, um, a great segue into the, some of the swing trading rules we're going to have today, but boy, oh boy. I mean, this is, I don't know what this is. This is smart money managers paying attention to a good stock. I rarely talk about the fundamentals of a stock, but you know, once I switched from cutting the cable to uh, going to smart TVs, I recognized the power of what Roku is doing here. Reminds me of Microsoft back in the 90s when Microsoft used to bundle um, it, uh, uh, its software with all the new Dell computers and HP computers, and it just wound up on your platform. And that's kind of what Roku is doing. They're just bundling themselves. You buy a new TV, and more than likely, you're going to have Roku menu on there, and off you go if you want to buy something, and they're starting to collect money from you. So. I'm a technical guy. I don't really get caught up in the fundamentals, but the story is there and the money managers seem to be liking it down here and supporting it. So I think it was a great defensive pick for the week. It's not really giving us any trouble. Um, I do believe that the, the, uh, the downside target was 103.50. Don't let it close below 103.50. And I'm just kind of eyeballing that level, as you can see, under the bird in the hand that we talked about there. So 103.50, you know, it's going to be right about there. We don't want to see a close. We can see a tickle or a trade or a touch, but we don't want to see a close below that level. And you can see if you look left, it makes a lot of sense. It's a low on that day, high on that day. So it's kind of a pivot level. And that'll be our downside. Upside, um, I believe we were looking for something, you know, around 125-ish. Uh, uh, yeah, pretty high up here. Yeah. So we could get a nice bounce. And I see a big pivot level right here. And my thinking was just get ahead of it. You know, this, this level up here is uh, 127. So if it's going to make it back up to this level at some point, just kind of jump in, uh, jump in the way of it there. That's a, good, to... uh, that's a good reward risk there. Yeah. Well, it's, it's an aggressive reward. Yeah. Yes. We'll, we'll, we'll talk about that. So that is the trade of the week, how it was derived, some of the nervousness we had about it. But all in all, the fact that it already had its correction kind of helps it weather the storm if the market uh, is going to have a bit more to say about it. All right, so that brings us to some some rules I started jotting down. And we're just going to go through them one by one, and we'll just talk a little bit about them. First one was very good segue. It already makes sense. Um, who owns the first 15 minutes of the market each day? Well, the algorithms do. And what's happening is the algorithms are chewing through a lot of overnight pent up demand, a lot of people putting in their E-Trade orders, good till canceled stop orders. And that opening session is really almost like a come out roll on craps. You, you just have to survive it. Um, and there's many different nuances to that. There's, you know, when it comes to entering a position or when it comes to maybe even deciding if you want to get stopped out on that come out roll, that's a whole other discussion for another day. But for the most part, I want to keep it simple. Um, Deciding to enter a trade in the first 15 minutes pretty much has always been um, bad for me. And I know Andy will agree. Um, trying to wait 15 and even 30, because if you guys can recall, at 30 minutes of the hour, 10 o'clock Eastern, we usually get some sort of a big daily economic data dump. And by that time, you have a lot of algorithms that have kind of gone through the motions in the first half hour. 
And a lot of times it seems like we can get some sort of a reversal at the top of the hour. And that can really hurt if you jumped in and you bought something a little bit too soon. So it's just been my experience and try not to touch the hot stove in the first 15 minutes when entering a new position. Let things try to sort out a little bit. Um, there might be exceptions to that rule, but for the most part, I found the first 15 minutes can be extremely tricky if you're trying to jump in a full size position and, and, mm -hmm. and take a stand. All right, um, take a, a scale in. I'm gonna uh, add scale out too, but uh, most importantly to scale in when it's volatile because the entry of any position is the most important part. And when the market is volatile, such as it is right now, we can get stopped out of things pretty quickly if we're jumping in and out with our normal size. So, you know, if you're normally jumping into something of maybe $2,000, which is a good round number for a small account, um, maybe you want to jump into a thousand first, wait for the coast to be clear and then jump into that second thousand dollar position. And then you've got your full position or even break it into threes. But it's mostly applicable when we're in a volatile market. Um, it doesn't, it's not always the case when we're in a slow market, but when we're in a volatile market, it saved me a lot of headache to get in too much size and then you get a little whip sawed out and then the market goes in the right direction and then you look back and you feel stupid because you were in the right trade with the right direction, but you had too much size to withstand the volatility, especially in the first half hour. And so that's a good reason when the market is extremely volatile, you know, big, big wave surfing. Um, be careful and the only thing you can control, you can't control the price action, but you can control um, your share size and um, that'll help. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Number three, market first. Well, um, I'm trying to think we had an example earlier uh, specifically, but I'll, I'll find another one. This just has to do with kind of what I was saying, you know, going into the weekend, trying to pick a, a trade of the week. We had already bounced all the way up into the pocket with two big green day bars. And we had to be mindful of what the market's doing first. Um, so that is always important um, in your decision making. And, and what I mean by that is, and I'll give you, a, I'll give you a great example. It happened to me yesterday and he's going to laugh because he saw it happen in real time. I was short NASDAQ by way of the SQQ queue, but we'll just use the NASDAQ as our example. We're going to go back to yesterday here. And, um, and I was trying to kind of play this, this bounce, but I was a little bit premature. And I think the actual stop on the share size that I had was, was probably something like up here. And that would have been the normal risk one to make two, which we'll talk about coming up. Wait, Steve, I think they may be confused. Uh, I mean, Steve was shorting the queue. I was shorting. I was shorting the, the NASDAQ. NASDAQ. Yeah, so he's, uh, yeah, I just yeah. want to make sure. Yeah, I'm not going to put the SQQ that. up. I'm just going to say I was shorting the NASDAQ, and I was doing it because I wanted to swing trade. I wanted to let these two days bounce out of the way, and then yesterday um, took a position and took it maybe 30 minutes after the open, and then it went against me, and it went against me. But I knew, you know, this is a swing trade. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let my guard down here. I'm going to be a little vulnerable. I'm going to let you guys know how I screwed up. Maybe we can learn from it because I'm not a, a, immune from screwing up. But this is what I did, and this is how I screwed up. Um, I was on the right side of the trade. Um, I was in uh, the right trade pretty much at the right time. I wasn't shorting it down here. I was waiting for that bounce. What we're trying to talk about, and remember, we're we're focusing on here is what is the bigger market doing? Back up. Decision making on the bigger picture. And I got caught yesterday. Two things um, started to pull back and come back for me. Then, you know, without getting too much into it, we we live in a market right now where it's basically waiting on every tweet from the president. It's waiting on a China update. And it's waiting on what Fed Powell or the Feds want to say to try and keep this market afloat. So we got this big intraday spike right here, and this is where I made my mistake. You know, I thought, okay, I'm not. I'm. I'm I started getting a little emotional. That's mistake number one. Don't get emotional. And I said, this is how it's going to be, huh? Screw it. I'm not going to stick around and let them stop me out up here. I made a decision on an emotional intraday move, when in reality nothing had really changed in terms, of, mm -hmm. in terms of my original 
risk reward stop out. So I cut out early. Did I feel stupid at the end of the day? I sure did. I left it on the table. I was in it and I let it go because of an intraday stupid hiccup. So what I'm getting at guys here, I made my decision to get out early and exit this position, not on the daily chart where it made sense to get out, but on the intraday emotional uh, in the moment decision, bad. And I'm admitting that and there you go. Um, so that is what I kind of mean when I'm saying base your decisions on the bigger picture when we're swing trading. We're not scalping, we're swing trading, all right? And this, by the way, these rules are made to be broken. We all break them. I break mm -hmm. them, Andy breaks them, Brian Shan mm -hmm. breaks them. We all break them, but we try and remind us. And I told Andy this is going to be a good reminder um, in our other swing trading account to go through these rules again today and remind us, remind ourselves what makes a good um, performance for a swing trading um, swing trading uh, time frame. All right, I have another great moment of vulnerability here. Check your bias at the door. What do I mean by this? Well, primarily, I like to focus on technicals. But if you guys know, I've been talking a lot about the silver move lately. This silver move has been an unbelievable breakout. And boy, up here, I felt like one of the smartest guys around because I'd been talking about it for so long. But I also knew that you know this type of move doesn't last long, that's parabolic. Parabolics don't last long, they have to come back to earth. So came back to earth, also, going through the swing trading account, most of the money has been made lately in pause. I've kind of been trading this thing really well, catching a lot of these nice pullbacks. Well, hasn't been as good lately, but I'm still fighting with it. Now, where I'm going with here is I'm going to check my bias at the door. I'm aware that I'm biased. I'm aware that I've gone to this well a few too many times. And I'm also keenly aware that this is one of the ugliest, nastiest head and shoulders staring at me. Not only that, it's one of the ugliest, nastiest um, moving averages that I've been preaching about, right? Bouncing right up into the pocket, right? Well, I'm conflicted, you know? It doesn't always mean that we have to roll back over, but I'm going to stay with my initial bias and say, I spotted something back here. It seems like a big monumental shift change. I really feel like these dips were still meant to be bought. But in the back of my mind, I'm reminding myself, hey, I am being biased here. I'm actually going against what I'm constantly talking about here in these webinars. But for the moment, guys, it's kind of working. It's grinding its way through. Um, I'll talk about the specific trade in a minute, but I'm using this example here for the moment to uh, express the fact that I'm well aware of the fact that I am biased in silver and in the silver miner lately. But I'm not going to sit here and watch the price action on me tomorrow, roll over and close on lows and sit here and get stubborn and say, well, I still like silver. No, I can't do that. The price action would be denying me right in my face and I would be very um, silly to not pay attention, but the price action is not doing that today. Price action is giving me, it's fighting. It continues to fight through all of these levels. And we might just be one more day away of a possible yeah. technical breakout to where I don't have to look at this anymore and say I'm fighting it. This is the day we lost right here. This is the day silver lost, pause I should say. Look at it. 50, 50 period, 50 period, 50 period, 50 period, 50 period. And the following day, what do I always say? When it closes below that level, that's when we lose it. And that's where we lost it. Well, I've been kind of dabbling with it here and there, but it's been alive for a couple of days. And again, I'll talk about it more specifically, but it gave me a nice bottoming tail today. But back to our original rule, check your bias at the door. Just be aware if you if you got a bias. And by a bias, I mean, oh, my brother-in-law works for this company. He told me the CEO mm. is buying shares and they're coming out with this bitch and new product. And I know and I'm so smart because nobody else knows. That's that's a bias. And if you can't admit that to yourself, then you you gotta you're gonna have to suffer some pain before you learn that bias. Um, so the point is, I'm aware of my bias. I'm aware that I'm kind of going against all the technicals here. But the bottom line is. I'm not going to give this thing a lot of slack. I'm going to cut it quickly. What I really like today is it got back and it recovered above this 10 period moving average. That's step number one, and it did it very well. Tomorrow, we've got the 20 period online, so we'll see what happens there. But check your bias. I'm aware of my bias here, and I will continue to let the technicals tell me what to do. But normally, it's not a trade I would take, but I am in it. Contrarian entries and exits. Um, if you're going to try and separate yourself and this you know especially has to do with day trading but when you're going to make your entries and you're going to make your exits i, I used a great an analogy and i'm going to use it again at this level 
of competition, it's like the professional football. You know, you watch these wide receivers try so hard to get a fraction of second of separation from the defensive back so they can make the catch and, and, and do what they're supposed to do. Well, if we're gonna follow the herd, buy breakouts, chase green candles to enter trades, we're not getting any separation and eventually that's gonna catch up with us. We need to get separation from the herd to give us a chance. And what I mean by that are um, entries that might be um, not chasing. I've got another example I'll show you. Um, and also exits. What's been working really well for me for a while in swing trading is, you know, look on the daily chart and let's look at Roku right here as an example. I would say Roku, you know, I, I know that was my price target, but maybe, maybe I'm just gonna say, you know what, I'll, I'll be happy at this gap. This gap also mm -hmm. corresponds with that 20 period. You know what? I'm actually just gonna put the order in brokerage plus, limit sell. Hey, if I'm happy with it here, I should be happy with it in the moment. And you'd be surprised sometimes, you just let that, let that limit order sit out there and it's a bell that the price action goes up and rings. So when most people are looking at it and they're cheering it on and they're standing up and they're throwing their arms up in victory, like, like Dan used to do, <laughs> um, <laughs> that was the kiss of death. That was usually the turn that the moment you're uh, you know, congratulating yourself and exalting yourself, you probably should be taking profits. And that's what I mean by be contrarian. Enter, and I'll, I'll, I'll have an example for you. Enter on the contrarian entries and try and make your exits on contrarian exits. And one of the best ways to do a contrarian exit is to just look at the chart and say, you know, I'd be really happy if I could just get that. And what happens is you start getting closer to it. You say, oh, maybe I can just get a little bit more. No, don't get greedy. Just leave it out there. Let it hit. More often than not, you're going to be happy because you were right the first time. And it, it's a great feeling when they run up and they buy something from you that you have for sale. And then you look over and they're probably regretting it an hour later. It's, it's a good feeling. So contrarian entries and exits, that's going to help really separate you from the herd. And it's going to add up. It will add up and piece piece by piece have a hard stop you're always going to have to have a stop i mean we put a hard stop um in the uh, for the most part in the trade of the weeks but you always got to know where's your exit you know <laughs> you know uh, military guys enter a room and they always know where their exit is if they have to we should be the same way and that exit is not an arbitrary exit it's not oh because i don't want to lose 102 dollars that's where it starts to sting the exit should be based on a technical reason like I gave here in Roku, the technical reason, if it closes below 3.10350, that's a technical reason to get out and you should adhere to that stop. Um, I say hard stops, meaning they're coded in there. You can go to the store and have it in there and if it's trips while you're at the, you know, away, that's great. That's why they're there. Mental, it's where it gets a little bit more tricky. I mean, you know, you can start redrawing that line or removing the goalpost if they're mental, but that's not gonna help you in the long run. You just gotta be faithful to yourself. But a lot of times Andy and I kind of pull the hard stop in the first 15 minutes of the market. And more often than not, that has helped us rather than hurt us. Because usually on a good trade, that first 15 minutes, they go down and they find a way to stop out the weak hands. And it's no fun when you're one of those weak hands. So occasionally we'll pull the hard stop and go with a soft mental stop in the first 15 minutes. Once that come out roll craps uh, reference to, to, to use the craps reference again. Once that come out role has been established, then you can put that hard stop back in there. All right, moving on to rule number seven. And I've got a visual here. You're never ever gonna get anywhere if you're risking 50 bucks and then you're taking 50 buck profits. You're just gonna spin your wheels. And I have a visual for you. I found this uh, yesterday. Look at this neato little, there we go. Risk reward. The person that made this actually is backward. It should be one to one, one to two, one to three risk reward. But what we can see is some people get caught up and they come in and they say, well, what's Holly's win rate? You know, it shouldn't it be 70%? Well, not necessarily. This graph shows you, this table shows you that even at a 50% win rate, if you are risking one to make two, here's our there's our square right there. If you're risking one to make two, you are going to be profitable in the long run. If you're, as I said a moment ago, risking 50 bucks to make 50 bucks, you're never going to be anything better than a break-even trader. Of course, we want to obviously stay out of this area, but it starts to show you that, you know, if you can really get into the risk one to make three, you're profitable in the 30 to 40% range. 
So you have to adhere to reaching out. And that's why they say, cut your profits, cut your losers quick and let your profits run. Well, letting your profits run is probably one of the harder things to do in trading. But we have to constantly be mindful that we're risking one to make two. All of the trade of the weeks that go out, if you look at them and size them up, the stop is a value of one, the target's gonna be at least a value of two above that. And there's just no other way to do it. If you're not doing that, you're just gonna be running circles. Ah, this was my uh, example today. I think I exit decision on charts only. You know, there's a bit of overlap here, market first. Um, let's backtrack to market three because this was probably more of the example that I gave earlier of me and the cues. Um, my exit decision was not based on the daily. My exit decision was based on an intraday, 15 minute candle and a lot of emotion. The market first back here at number three, I was probably pointing more towards, look, you know, are we in an uptrend? Why do you keep trying to short? Are we in a downtrend? Why do you keep trying to go long? Um, play with the market's giving. Uh, if the market's only giving a day and a half of movement before it reverses in the other direction, and you recognize that, then your next trade, you know, should probably try and stay that way. The market dictates what we can do, market comes first. So a little backtracking there. And then lastly, know your sectors. Um, uh, this is gonna come into play again here when I talk about these three trades over here. Um, know your sectors, know what's been strong, know what's been weak, know what's holding the market up, what isn't. Uh, it just, it comes in real handy. And I use, you know, this, um, this sector watch over here. Today, we had gold miners were leading the way for most of the day and into the close. And there's my buddy Silver as well. So it's always good to know where the sectors are. Now, I'll just go right into it. These are the nine rules that, you know, kind of came to mind over the last few days that Andy and I both really try to adhere to in swing trading. We've been doing this a long time, uh, sitting together and our methods sort of kind of merge into the same kind of a method. <clears throat> so there's really nothing on here that he wouldn't do and nothing on there that, you know, that, that he might say that I probably wouldn't do. It's just, there's a lot of uh, overlap. So with those rules, I want to finish up before we bring Scott in. Um, I had mentioned, you know, we're, we're, we're paper trading. We're testing the paper trade module. And I want to try and create some value and benefits for people going forward. Um, what I decided to do starting last Friday when I entered pause was to start mirroring these trades on here that I'm doing in the other account. And you just do it in a simple, simple format here. You know, 50 bucks, 50 bucks. These are all basically, you know, be risking 50 bucks to try and make it 100 or maybe even 150. Risk one to make three perhaps. But nonetheless, these are real trades in another account and I'm gonna show you the genesis of them. So we start with pause and here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna try and apply some of the rules we just talked about and how they apply to some of these trades that are on here. So pause was, as I mentioned, <clears throat> I've been kicking around trying this thing. We're on a volatile market. I entered a small amount, scale in when volatile adhering to rule number two. And that was on um, last Friday over here. Let's open this up a little bit. And it didn't really get anywhere. It just kind of beat around back and forth. There's that blue line. You can see that blue line is right about here. This is this was the entry day on Friday. So had a good day on Friday, closed into the weekend a little strong. Yesterday gap down, rolled up, came back over. And then today is kind of interesting. Look what happened today. We had a huge move in silver overnight. And what did we do? We gapped up in a giant fashion. Well, this up here, it wasn't really enough to take the profits because as I said, risking one to make one is never gonna get us anywhere. We need to get some more profit. But I also am not gonna add up here. Why am I not gonna add up here? Because that would be breaking rule number five, contrarian entries and exits. So as you can see, I did add to this position today with this buy tag right here. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna call that a contrarian entry. Chasing the gap up here would not have been a contrarian entry to add to my position. I watched immediately the first 15, there's another rule, don't do anything in the first 15 minutes. Look at the nastiness in the first 15 minutes. I said, well, if it's doing this in the first 15 minutes, it's probably gonna go the whole way. It's just what these things do. And as it got down here in the gap fill zone, I entered another um, position. And that was the right spot to do it because by the end of the day, this thing is still showing its true color. So a couple things happening here, scaling in volatile markets 
and contrarian entry and exit in the hopes of minimum trying to risk one to make two or trying to make this thing work for us. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, that is it applied to the rules? The blue line there is the entry from last Friday. Now, Steve, <clears throat> might, might not you, uh, if you're looking at the market conditions uh, and everything is lining up great for silver and the, uh, and the sector, that maybe once you do get that two, that maybe you might just say, hey, this is looking pretty good. Maybe I'll go for a three to one reward. I don't know. Yeah, Andy brings up a good point. I forgot. Know your sectors. What was strong today? <laughs> gold miners and silver. This is keeping me in the trade. I felt like I had an excellent ad on a contrary um, moment in time on the trend line, following the trend there. Um, now, I'm going to let, this is really the interesting line in the sand for me is what's going to happen because remember, this is where we lost it. Held, held, held. This is where we lost the 50. So the 50 seems to be very important to pause. So I'm probably going to watch and see how it trades if we can get there. I'm lucky enough to get there. And if we do, and there might be some more meat on that bone. We'll see. I, I don't know. I'm going to try and play this one as, as best I can. I don't want to get out well, of it too yeah, soon. Yeah, well, you can always go back to you know, That's where you take half off maybe. And then see that's you can exactly. Listen, yeah. Scale out. Scale out half. Yep. Might, might even just go in there and just put it, like I said, put a limit to sell and just turn my back on it. And if it hits it, it hits it. Mm -hmm. All right. So the next trade um, was Twitter. And Twitter was entered on Monday. All right, and we can see exactly the line here in the B plus uh, corresponds to pretty much the same price I have in the other account. Now, Twitter was on my radar. Maybe I might've talked about it before, but I was short Twitter and I got my day and a half move. And what was I focused on? I was focused on, I think I even talked about with you guys, if I could just get Twitter to fill the gap, I'd be a happy clam. It filled the gap. I took my trade. This day doesn't bother me. I thought, you know, this thing just might set up again. It might just bounce right back up into the pocket. And if it does, I'm going to take it. Well, it did. Bounced right back up into the pocket yesterday. And you can see that blue line towards the end of the day uh, is where I took it. And coming into – and this is something I like to do, guys. Um, there's nothing wrong with taking a trade position at the end of the day because sometimes if you're right, you get a really nice head start the next morning. And we did. Got a nice little head start this morning. Um, didn't touch it, you know, back to the fact that I don't want to second guess myself and talk myself out of a good trade. It's doing exactly what I thought it would do bounce into the pocket. And I feel like it's got a date with at least this level again. So we might bid one half there for one half profit and see if we can let the other half go. I'm getting way ahead of myself, but this would be a perfect world. Um, bid half right there at the prior bounce that we had earlier. I just feel like the momentum is, is going to take us there. So that was the um, thinking there. I'm trying to think of the rules that might have applied to this one. Uh, contrary and entry certainly applied to this one on the daily chart. It was a contrary entry on the daily chart. Big bounce, day two, day three, coming up into the pocket. That's where I'll take my entry. And usually, if you get it right, it's a very easy, safe entry where you don't have too much pain going the opposite direction. Um, and then... I guess the last thing, well, market first, market is definitely showing us to go short. I'm not trying to go long. Pause is a different long. That's a defensive play. It's gold, miner, silvers. That's why they were strong today when the market was weak. Now, lastly, I will admit, MU was, and he's going to like this, it was a revenge trade for not getting my cues to work yesterday. <laughs> I'm pissed. I felt like I left something on the table. So... Something interesting in today's MU trade. Let me click into the B plus so we can get the actual chart here. All right. First thing I did, I noticed coming into today, we talked about that uh, bounce uh, pullback to the 50. And last week we flipped it upside down. One of the most l nice looking things on that chart when I did that yesterday. Let's try this again. One more time. There it is. It was Micron. This is what Micron looked like yesterday right into that 50, a little bit of a wick. I uh, thought I'm gonna keep an eye on Micron today because the semis have also been kind of weak. Semis, actually, they were weak today. They haven't been weak, but I noticed, I'll get back to that in a second. So the market opens, we've got a couple of rules to follow here. MU, market opens, I want it, but I'm not gonna grab it in the first 15 minutes. I let, I let the gap down, the green bar up, and then we start to get into the second 15 minutes, a red bar, trading the market, 
I look at the S, I look at the Qs. On the open, this is what the Qs were doing. Going lower, I looked at the SMHs. The SMHs were getting brutalized on the open. So over here, I see red, red in the SMHs, the semis, know your sectors, rule number nine. What's the market doing? Red, red. What is the market first doing? First 15 minutes, I had held, I adhered to that rule. But what I found was I didn't want to wait too long because this micron was the only thing on the board that I saw in semiconductor land that was still green. And I loved it on the daily chart because I was watching it coming into today. So there was the entry there. A um, uh, couple of good rules we just tapped on. Same thing going on here. I think this has a date with that level right there. And that might be a perfect opportunity to bid to cover half. And then hopefully maybe we get some more for the remainder. I think that's about the best plan I can have uh, for these uh, three trades, which are live. I'm just mirroring them here in this account. And by the way, I'm doing it in such a size to where look at this. If somebody had a $10,000 account, I'm only exposing um, like uh, I think 6,500 here in this mm -hmm. share size. Yeah, 6,500. Keeping it simple, risk 50 bucks, try to make 100 or 150. So we're only using 6,500 in exposure here in this paper trade simulation. I really feel like these three trades can net maybe three, 400 bucks for me. Uh, in the next day or two or three we'll see so um just a Let's little see. bit of a, yeah go ahead uh, put up twitter but what real quick i want to explain something uh, to to people because you hear about patterns go pause go wally ask so you're shorting a, a go pause go pattern well a go pause go mm -hmm. is more of a momentum pattern and it's usually associated with constructive charts as you can see this is kind of in a downtrend uh this uh steve and it's like he said it's bouncing right into the pop pocket it's usually more of a, a uh, momentum pattern where you have kind of a breakout and usually a good volume on that first green bar and then you have your pause pause so yeah it's a, it's a different concept when you're when you're looking at a, a daily chart like that that's broken and below all its moving averages you'd rather have those on top of their moving averages you're yeah, welcome. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oops, I'm gonna put more weight into the fact that it, it's running right smack into that downward sloping 10 mm -hmm. period moving average. If this, if, if, if this were the 10 period moving average and it were coming up and we were coming off that 10 period moving average and there was nothing above it, mm -hmm. I would have never shorted that in a million years. But exactly. this is what I'm seeing right there, the 10 period moving average, three, three day bounce right up into it, just like Micron. I think there was one more question from Anthony for overall market uh, compare count. Yeah. If, if over 55 one way, but for some sectors, would you use it as the best guidance for the day? Um, you know, we check that over, that we check that compare account every day, Andy and I and Jamie and Michael do in the account uh, we're, we're watching. And um, today, that gave me a lot more hope. <laughs> when we saw it today, when we looked at it, it was like, I don't know, 65, 70, 30, something. It was really, really bad on the open. And that gave me a lot more um, confidence to short MU and also stay short Twitter and, and the other stuff. But I'll make sure I answered your question. Simply, what is it after 15 minutes or use TI custom to make the compare count? Um, uh, and how and how, what indicator would you use? You know, it's arbitrary, Anthony, on how you want to use that compare count window. Um, Jamie was the one who came up with 15 minutes after the open. And I think it's a good place to just give a snapshot in time as to what's happening at the 15 minute mark after the open. Mm -hmm. So, and um, readings that we would want to see, you know, 45, 55, that's kind of wishy-washy. 60, 40 starts to get my attention. Like yeah. it was today, 65, 35 to the sell side. That was, it was a nice thing to see, to sit on your hands and say, okay, I think we're, we're on the right side, trying to focus on the short side here. All right, well, somebody's asking for the A table. I'm out of content, so as uh, I grab this and save and share to cloud, I'll copy and put it in the chat window. I think that's what we got for today. So if Scott's there, we'll go ahead and bring him in and uh, deal with some announcements. Yeah, thank you. So a couple items as we exit today. Do we have a summit coming up? It's really got a great lineup of speakers. So go to trade-ideas.com slash summit and learn about how you can get tickets. Join us in San Diego. Uh, if you're not going to be able to make it live, visit the live stream page, tradeideas.com slash live stream. And sign up for notifications of how to watch it as the days grow closer. Uh, you can use the code that you see in your, in your, on your screen right there, Summit SD, to save 30% off a ticket. Uh, anyone that's in Southern California or the area, it's a no-brainer. Um, 
It's a great location. It's fantastic. Check out the landing page and uh, learn all about it. I got great lineup of speakers. Uh, we have a series of ebooks. They're free. Just go to trade-ideas.com slash setup. Put in your email address. Both Andy and Steve contributed chapters. There's three separate ebooks, each with two chapters, and it also includes cloud links to some of the strategies. Check them out. It's been pretty popular. Uh, then we also have a podcast that we release pretty much weekly. Um, we try to do it on Fridays and get a fresh one out uh, as often as we can. So most weeks we do it. Trade Ideas Podcast is the search term that you search for inside your podcast apps. Just go ahead and do that. Add us as a subscription. You'll get the update when the next one comes out. Uh, we also have a code for you that you can use to save. Uh, you save 15% off the first month or year of any subscription by using Save on Ideas, all caps. It's case sensitive. And uh, you can also use this code if you're a standard subscriber to do an upgrade. So do keep that in mind. Uh, any questions, go ahead and email us at info at trade-ideas.com. That's the best email for support. It goes right into our help desk software and gets routed to the appropriate team member. Uh, you can follow Steve on Twitter at TodayTrader. Also follow at Trade Ideas and at QuantBot. Uh, Facebook.com slash Trade Ideas Pro is the Facebook page to like and share stuff with your friends. Uh, thanks, everyone, for attending. See you next time. For the replay email. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks, everybody. I'll see you on Thursday.